Coming to you live from parts unknown. Here are two guys hanging out, chatting about life, crime, and passing time. One loves to wear his sunglasses inside. He's a connoisseur of tasteless thoughts and an avid fan of Dawson's Creek. Who isn't? And the other is a man who's always willing to one-up your story. He loves his lawn a little too much and has a closet full of white New Balance sneakers. Who doesn't? Here are Captain and Morgan. I just realized that Ken is the might be the coolest person in the world. But maybe we're talking about Ken in the intro, the man who likes to wear sunglasses inside. He looks okay. good in sunglasses. Yeah, well, Ken looks good no matter what he is. Whatever, whatever he's wearing, Ken looks good. I love Thriller, by the way. That was... I remember watching the making of Thriller like maybe a hundred times when I was a kid, even though it freaked me out. And that's like back when like Michael Jackson looked good. It was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, kind of a wide nose. His nose looked kind of like his father's nose. So that's, I could see they wanted to change that up. He didn't want to look like his father. Okay. But then he looked pretty good for a while. Like a handsome gentleman. And he just got strange. All right. What's that documentary? Leaving Neverland? Was it Leaving Neverland? Yeah, we're going to say yes. Now, interesting documentary. It's one I of those ones it where oh, it's good. I mean, it's kind of hard to listen to some of the stuff, but what's so interesting about it is. The two main people that are in the dock that were child stars that were friends with Michael Jackson, they for years actually testified in in his behalf. So kind of, kind of, I think a lot of people gave him crap because it's like, hey, for years you testified on his behalf. But I think as they probably got older, they realized, what, what am I doing here? Um, and it's difficult too, because, uh, you know, a lot of people say that they'd be more believable if, if they came out why he was alive, but, um, that's kind of the whole grooming process and, and maybe yeah. they didn't feel like they could come out. You know, Michael Jackson is one of those weird cases from you know, the 90s, 2000s where, when the court case was going on, you had a large contingent of people who said, oh, he's famous at Adam or after right. him. You know, so you have Michael Jackson. It's the same thing happened with OJ, right? And I told, I mean, I talked about this, you know, I mentioned this to you the other day. I'm on this big OJ kick again because of this Tim Golden podcast. But it's, it's so strange to me that, that there were a lot of cases in that time period where, as it was happening, um, there's a lot of, I don't want to say deniers, but there are a lot of people in support of these, these criminals, perpetrators. Well, it's, I think it's a slippery slope because one, we're supposed to, it's supposed to be they're innocent until proven guilty. And now we live in an age where it's like you're almost guilty and you have to prove your innocence. Yeah. Um, and I think that becomes a, a difficult thing. Uh, you think so part how, of that is, you think part of that is social media? I mean, well, not even just social media, but this uh, the twenty four hour news cycle now. I mean, because you think about it, before we'll say even before the O.J. Simpson case, um, I would say most people were getting their news from either the newspaper or from their the nightly news. You know, they're watching Tom Brokaw. Yeah, but with time. O.J. with O.J. Simpson, and you you know specifically CNN and their pretty much 24 hour coverage of the case. I think everything kind of switched over to that, to the cable news and it, be, you know, and so now everyone's on this 24 hour news cycle where we get everything basically as it's happening. Yeah. It becomes more important to be first than it does to be right. 
and that becomes an issue. And I haven't heard any of this podcast yet, but um, I think it just frustrate me because I I don't think people want to get to the truth of of, of really anything. I mean, you kind of said it before, and I don't think it's a bad thing, and I don't think it's a knock on you or anybody, but you're like they solved the golden state killer case. And now yeah. what am I going to do? And, yeah. and, and so that, that becomes a, a big issue. And then, and with this, um, what's Ron Goldman's sister's podcast. Yeah. Cam. It's like, okay. And this is, you know, this is the, what the kettle uh, pot calling the kettle black, but it's like, we have uh, this time period now, like, just wait, give it a couple, give it 10 more years, maybe, depending, depending on how much was left to Burke Ramsey, give it another 10 more years. And, and if once there's another, like, we had a true crime wave, I actually think we're dying down from the true crime wave fad. Yeah. But, Give it another 10 years and let's see if, if Brooke Ramsey makes something about his sister. Um, and you know, the, the shitty thing about that case is, uh, the Goldman's won a civil suit. They can't touch his NFL retirement, so they can't really get much of anything because he didn't have much left. So they're never going to get paid what they're owed in the civil trial. Um, but I also think that's strange too. I mean, I don't think they wanted the money and I can't speak for them, but I'm, I'm assuming they didn't want the money and they just wanted the the guilty verdict. And by being, by taking them to civil court, they could get the guilty, the guilty verdict. And they also had more information. I just think neither the trial trial is not correct. The trial is not even close to the whole story. And then, and then Goldman's, their whole family in general, they have this narrative that they have created almost as like a PR thing. And it's not the truth either. Um, there's just things that can't be accounted for. And I, I think everybody wants it to be as simple as, is OJ guilty or innocent? I've heard people that are very close to him, and I find this kind of fishy. Um, fishy but also like people that like i admire and i won't say who they are but i was i was actually listening to an interview last night and the guy they brought up oj and how the guy's friends with oj and he's like look man if you were friends with oj then you know he didn't do it now i don't know what the hell that means yeah um because i i think a lot of this stuff that oj has done is probably not in his control, you know, ETC or, or something like that. I mean, that guy was a running back during a time period where running backs got hit in the head. Defenders led with their head. Helmets the, weren't safe. Yeah. Helmets were not safe. I mean, it, so uh, then that becomes an issue because if you find out that he's actually suffering from some kind of disease and that's the reason why he killed her, which I think probably had a part to do with it. Then, then do you feel bad for the guy? Do you, can you really hold the guy that accountable for those, you know, horrible actions? I, I, I think you. Well, I mean, you hold. Yeah, but it's just like we also have cases where people go to a, a mental facility because they're criminally insane, and I'd argue that if you're having these bouts of etc where you're blacking out. And it's just like we had the football player that uh, there was a football player that killed his mother, didn't know he killed his mom. And basically the cops were like, here's the, all the evidence that we have against you. And he was like, OK, I guess I killed my mom. But if you listen to OJ's side of the story uh, and if I did it, he basically states that he went over there, got in an argument, blacked out, came to they're dead. What the hell happened? And in his book, he has somebody there. Now, other people think that the person that he's talking about in the book is 
some fictitious character. I actually Charlie. don't think. Talking about Charlie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Charlie. in the book, he calls it Charlie. Yeah, and it's just um, there's evidence that there was somebody else there. So I, I don't think that was fictitious. I don't think this Charlie person person was fictitious. I think if I think it probably went down the way OJ stated it went down. Uh, but but having a bout with ETC, that would make sense with all his friends coming out and saying, look, if you knew OJ, you know he couldn't do it. <clears throat> okay, well, when the guy's suffering from some kind of ETC uh, episode, that's not your friend. That's your friend suffering with the disease. I don't so, know. I mean, yeah. is, is he responsible? Yes. Should he spend yeah. the rest of his life in jail? Yes. Um, yeah, but I, I living living the life and the good life in Las Vegas. Well, not really. I mean, he got he got put in jail or sentenced to twenty years in jail for a crime that there's no way he should have been convicted of more than a year or two years or possibly just probation. Mm -hmm. But you know, they got it. They got him because they couldn't get him on on the murder of his ex wife. Yeah, but he was released last year. Yeah, but he spent, what, 13 years in jail? Uh, eight, I think it was eight. Eight years, yeah. Eight years. So, okay, so he spends eight years in jail for a crime that he probably could have just got probation for. And, um... Oh, well, yeah, they went, they went at him hard, you know. I think they got him on uh, kidnapping charges, fourth weapons charges. Yeah, so... Yeah, they, and the, the two guys that brought the guns... All they had to do was lie and say that OJ told them to bring the guns, and they didn't get any time. So when somebody gets sentenced to 20 years and the other two people with them that had the guns got sentenced to no time, like that's not a justice system. And uh, do I believe that he killed his ex-wife? I do believe so. But you can't then roll that over into the, into the next case. But I'd be interested to actually sit down and talk with the Goldmans because I, like, I understand that you want to blame somebody. I understand that you think OJ is guilty. I get that point. I agree with you on that point. I just don't think that's the whole story. And I think there's another part of the story that's missing. And there's another person that's responsible. Um, and, and I think it would be nice if they forged ahead on that idea. I don't know if they ever will. I, that I'd be interested to hear the podcast if, if they had some of those thoughts, uh, as of now, no. I mean, they haven't even touched on that. I mean, I don't know if they are. Um, I mean, the fact of the matter is, their their son, their brother, on the back of his hand, uh, the back of his shirt, there's handprints, bloody handprints, uh, basically suggesting that somebody came up behind him with bloody handprints. And it kind of like squeezed the back of his shirt. And if those, what do you, what do you mean squeeze the back? Of his you know, like how you know, like you like back in like the eighties movies where somebody would come up and grab somebody's shirt and slam them against the wall. Oh yeah, yeah. How you like grab the shirt and twist? That's what the handprints are from, but they're from behind, and they don't have a match to those handprints, and it, they don't match OJ. I know that much, and obviously they don't match. Goldman because uh or or Nicole. So that suggests that there's somebody else there during the attack. And to me, that's another injustice. You know, um this this lady which was abused by an awful person. Again, I I think some of that abuse is probably just in general. I don't think that has much to do with the ETC. I think that's come kind of comes from nature and nurture as far as OJ is concerned. So that that's where the abuse comes from, and it's it's horrible that he didn't ever spend time in jail uh, for any of those crimes, and then the fear he was put into her and all that stuff. But um, there's so many parts of the story that are just not told that that people don't discuss, and then when you bring it up, like they want to think that you're some like wacko conspiracy theorist. I mean, chances are. And this is one of my other issues with people supporting like the Kardashians. Like, 
the Kardashians, you know, are partly where they're at because of their plotting to murder somebody father, you know, Robert Kardashian, um, based on a serial killer and based on a guy that's in jail right now, both claim that they, they were both claim that they were hired by an associate of OJ's to get rid of her. So if one of those stories is true, Robert Kardashian is one of the biggest pieces of shit of all time because you're doing, uh, they, they expect, uh, you know, suspected that he did like money laundering. And then there was some betting that was going on in the NFL yeah. and that Robert Kardashian was a, a part of this. And if that's true, and he was going to hire somebody to get rid of Nicole Simpson, he is equally as big of a piece of shit as OJ is. Yeah. Um, at least OJ has a somewhat of an excuse for it um, because you have the ETC stuff. And I believe that when they, you know, and if he was smart, if OJ was smart, and um, which I don't think he is anymore, I think he was bright at one point, but I think the ETC has put a toll on him and plus just society in general has came down on this guy rightfully so he's a piece of shit because i believe he murdered nicole uh brown simpson but he would say you need to test my brain when i'm dead and i think they'd see all types of etc stuff going on oh sure you know um yeah so I, but and I don't think that would gives him a excuse or anything. But I think then that starts. Uh, it's different. It's not. Well, she was sleeping with one of my ex um, coworkers, so I decided to kill her. It becomes how much of this was the person being a piece of shit beforehand, nature and nurture. Or is it? Ha does it have something to do with this disease? And that's where you start getting the the gray, blurry line. But, but it's interesting that we started off with Michael Jackson because I think it's the same bullshit with the Jackson case. Is because people go, well, he had a weird childhood, and so right when you say that the guy had a weird childhood, all of a sudden there becomes this gray area. You're explaining it away. Yeah, and it's like, you know, a, a creep is a creep is a creep. It doesn't matter, you know, look, there, there's percentages uh, of kids that, that are molested that go on to become predators themselves. It's not a huge percentage, but there is a percentage that does not take away the bullshit that they inflict upon other people, you know, and a lot of people had horrible lives, and it's just like when Chris Brown beat Rihanna and then comes out and says, well, see, that's, that's the kind of family I grew up in. And then you have somebody like Will Smith that comes out and says, you know what? I, I was raised in a family where my dad beat up my mother and there was violence and there was cursing and blah, blah, blah. And so then he grew up and said that that it will not be allowed in my house and we're not going to have that kind of relationship. So, but it, it's funny to me that it's almost impossible and maybe you can say I'm wrong, but it's almost impossible. Once that people start excusing it away, it becomes gray in your brain. You know what I mean? I know. Yep. Like it's this weird thing. It's like you're like, OJ is a piece of shit. Well, he might have had this disease. And then for a second, you just go, oh, well, shit. I think it was a piece of shit beforehand. I don't know if that would have led him to be a murderer, though. I think he was controlling, abusive, manipulative. I think he went. Yeah, I don't like guys that prey on younger women. You know, a, 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 some of the age gaps not that big of a deal. My big issue is when guys, especially guys with money, date way below their age range, and but they do it as a sense of control. You see this a lot of times, too, when men date women with children. They yeah. use that as a leverage or sense of control, and, it, and it's, it's, it's absolutely horseshit. But yeah, but no matter what, you're going to get this gray area. And, and it's like the same way with Michael Jackson. He, he was the baddest motherfucker alive. That guy can sing 
If you want to know how talented he was, Jackson Five has have a song called "Can You Feel It," mm-hmm. yeah, and it has his brother singing, and they sound like dog shit. They sound they sound like somebody put like muffles over their ears so they can't sing in tune. It sounds like they're singing the song but not even listening to the song. That's how dog shit they are. Every single one of his brothers, dog shit, no talent, ass clowns. That's what they are. No talent, ass clowns. And you can hear it in that song. Would you put a mouth? coming together now. Can you feel it? But then when Jackson comes in. It's like all of a sudden you're like, this is the baddest motherfucking song of all time because yeah. that's how badass that dude was. That's how special that kid was. I would lo- I'd also like to see what the autopsy was because I'd like to know if, it, if his genitals were fucked with. Because... Yeah, here, mm. go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Talk about his genitals. Well, I was going to say because, you know, a lot of people think that there was some kind of form of castration that happened to him. So his oh. voice wouldn't, because that's what they do back in the day. If you were a really good singer back in the day, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of years ago, they go, Morgan, you're a great singer. You're 10 years old. Okay. We're going to castrate you. It's an honor. We're going to castrate you because they need those higher voices. Cause they wouldn't let women sing in the choirs. I mean, think yeah. about how messed up that is that men have been so afraid of women for so long that we didn't even let them sing in choir. We need you to sing in the choir because your voices are higher than ours. But guess what? Not that we're going to stop riding those high parts because we need those high parts. Those are the sweet, the goodness parts. We're not going to do that. We're going to take little boys and we're going to fuck up their genitals so they can sing high for the rest of their lives. They won't be able to have sex. But we're going to make it seem like some kind of honor because we were so afraid of giving women any kind of power or any door opening. Here's a door. Open it up. Just like we used to not let them. It would be like, women, you can't be in theater. We'll just have this dude play the chick part. (laughs) I mean, that's how insecure men are. Again, your ego it's not always your amigo. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 at, but yeah, you get these gray areas. But if you want to know how bad Jackson was, listen to Can You Feel It? Because the, the, the dog shit parts, his no talent ass clown brothers that sing on that song, it's so dog shit. And I used to teach that bass line. But one of the reasons why is because I was like, just wait till Jackson comes in. He's such a badass. And then he'd come in and he'd be like, oh shit. But it's also, there's a really funky guitar part. So I don't know if a brother, if one of his brothers actually played that guitar part, then they're a talented ass clown, but they're still ass clown nonetheless. But if they mess with his Peter so he could sing higher for the rest of his life, these are, I mean, okay, here's where it gets weird because some of those songs are monumental. You don't want them to ever go away. They would go away if they didn't mess with his, peter chances are they mess with this peter i'd like an autopsy done on this because i think they mess with that peter and then if they mess with the peter those people if he did a little boys they should be in jail also because that that's part of the whole situation now i actually believe that his that michael was probably molested he was probably raped multiple times uh by people in the music industry yes i can see and, that. And and then, you know, again, it's a small percentage, but I, I would say a higher percentage of somebody that is molested, raped, and then put into isolation with millions and millions of dollars. This is a disaster. This is, you know, you would think that this person maybe would have um, a chance mm-hmm. to, to, to not go on and not carry on the cycle of abuse. But, but I think that's a disaster waiting to happen. And, and a lot of people try to ex- excuse it away saying, well, he had all these sexual issues because he was raised um, Jehovah Witness. And therefore, 
by being i know a lot of jehovah witnesses and they don't go around you know molesting little kids yeah and but so, here's the thing you mm-hmm. can let's let's did any any of his brothers or sisters have those problems no i mean you think tito wasn't wasn't going around getting laid when he was 15 sure as hell tito was getting laid cuz he's fucking tito right but that doesn't mean that he that they they raped or molested tito though that's true they probably didn't cuz he's tito no, I mean, if you believe any of the, yeah. and, and a lot, again, a lot of people said, put on your tin hat, Captain, because put on your tin cap because you, you got to watch out. They're listening to you. Well, guess what? Idiots, they're listening to you, for one. Two, is it possible that the youngest person in the group that I think at one point was 11, they would say that his age was nine? So they're not. Especially back in the day, too, the the industry, the music industry, was millions upon millions of dollars. And if you don't think, and and that and that you see that all the time too, the the types uh, of a lot of these molesters, they're not 10, 11, 12 year old. They're younger. And then at some point, when you get too old, they don't want you no more, right? So, um. But does not excuse anything that he did, and 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 then that becomes a very gray area too. Because anybody with money, then you go, is he just a target? You'd have to watch uh, leaving. I think it's called Leaving Neverland. It's it's weird because it, it's it's a lot of people haven't watched it because I think the context is so dark. But I think anybody with a child should watch it these people groom we had a case in in the town that i grew up in these people groom like for example he the guy in our town he was a school bus driver have a job closer to kids you know right access to kids you're a school bus driver what did he do in his spare time boy scout leader Adam Carolla says that when it's time to have chaperones, right? They go, who wants to chaperone this weekend? The first four people that raise their hand, they're out. You're too eager. You want, you want to go on the camping trip? You're out. It's the guy that's sneaking out the back. Yeah. He doesn't want to do it. Captain sneak out of the back and they go, Hey captain, do you want to chaperone? The camping trip? No, hell no, I don't. That's the guy that you make go. Because he's not going to be dealing no boys. It's the ones that shoot their hands up. Now remember this, you know, because you don't want to, you don't want to come. Look, it's, it's as bad as driving a white cargo van. It's as bad as driving a white cargo van. When they ask you if you want to chaperone um, your kid's camping trip, you, you, you put your hand down. Not down your pants, not down your neighbor's pants, not down your kid's pants, just down. But no, so we had this school bus driver, Boy Scout leader, and that guy was set in the table. And and guess who? He had a, a mentally handicapped child, and and he would he would get the he'd get popular kids to hang out with his kid because they felt bad for him. And and I I actually uh, went to this kid, the, his son's name was Tony. Uh, he's pretty pretty slow, nice kid. He was probably molested a bunch of times. Uh, went to a, you know, a couple of his bowling parties. Again, setting the table. Let's have some bowling parties. Let's have some parties out in the open. Let's have some pup pup parties miniature golf for people that are not from the Midwest, but putt putt. Let's have these types of parties. Oh, let's have the detective's son spend the night at my house multiple times. We're not going to do nothing to him. We're setting the table. You know, so then when you're being investigated by the police, you know, the, the lead detective on the case is the going, my son spent multiple days at their house. My son went over there. And and here here's the messed up thing about it. 
I don't think once I ever said, can I spend the night at Tony's house? It was my parents coming to me saying, Hey, would you want to go hang out with Tony? We know he's a little different. We know he's a little, we know he's a little slow, but and he has some issues, but we know he has some issues, but you want to go spend some time with him? And it's just, it's, it's all about grooming. So if you have children, I understand that this conversation is uncomfortable. And maybe some of these stories of ne uh, leaving Neverland, maybe they're not true. But you can see a pattern in their stories. And you can see a pattern in hundreds, uh, not hundreds, but a lot of the other people that made accusations against Jackson. And it's your responsibility as a parent to keep your children safe. It's your responsibility to understand what kind of the, what this grooming could look like. Uh, so, so if something happens that you're not unaware and, I, and so I think yeah. it's a very important documentary. Again, it's then on the flip side to play devil's advocate guys, not alive. He can't defend himself, but, um, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if I believe him anyways. But when but when he talks about it's gonna sound like the weirdest thing I've ever said in my life. But out of all the penises I'd like to see, I'd like to see Jackson's penis. Because I've heard so many rumors about um I one of the rumors was the cat they did a castration to him um with like poison or some kind of like toxic chemical. Um, so I, I don't know if there's any truth to that, uh, but I've heard I, I rumors do, of such. I do think I heard that too. I don't know where from, but yeah, I have chemical castration. I, I know I've heard something. There, or, I, I look, I, I believe that the universe is a weird place, but sometimes the universe does, um, I think they do this thing where sometimes people are so evil that they turn. It's kind of like if you have a dog, you start ten. Your dog starts looking like you a little bit. You start looking like your dog a little bit. It's kind of the way it works. Or sometimes people get married and they they look similar. Yeah. So they kind of like grow together. But I also think it's the same thing too with like happiness. Loneliness, depression, anger, whatever your thing is. And I think Joe Jackson, the father of the Jackson Five, I think that guy was an evil fuck. And you and the older he got, the more evil he looks. I mean, somebody posts a picture of Joe Jackson. That guy just looks like evil. Like if you're yeah. like, hey, we need to, somebody to play evil in this movie, you'd be like, God, get Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson, yeah. Who's Joe Jackson? You know, the one with all those really bad kids that those kids that aren't talented, but they, they all skated by on the one kid's talent for a really long time. The one that they molested and raped. Yeah. He has that, that pencil thin mustache and well had he's dead now, but yeah, that, that pen, pencil mustache and come on. I want to see a picture of him. Somebody toss him. Fedora. Uh, Is he wearing a fedora? It's like the, he's always wearing a fedora. There's that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean that. He, he looks like he would he would break down your door, you know, and with a, a couple of goons, maybe holding a baseball bat, definitely some guns, you know. Yeah, that's a. I mean, I, pissed off. He just looks evil. Now, I used to watch the making of Thriller a bunch, and then I used to also watch uh, Jackson 5, the American Dream, made-for-TV oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. It was a great movie. But the scene where they're um, coming out of the gig and they're packing up the van and they're getting robbed, and, uh, and basically, you know, his kids can't really fight back, so he's trying to fight off these guys that are trying to rob him. <laughs> which I've had a couple scenarios 
um, of people trying to mess with me after a gig. But I was like, I think I have a look sometimes, especially when I'm leaving a club at 2 o'clock in the morning. I kind of have the look like I got nothing to lose, man. So if you want, if you want it, you can get it just like anybody else. Let me blow this one up. Look at him. Look at evil Joe Jackson. Young evil Joe Jackson. You're looking at the one that I just posted, the the comparison or the now and then. Yeah, he he just looks a little more evil. It's like the universe was like, you evil. You use the evil man. And look how all, all they're all handsome young boys. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's because I think they had a good looking mom. Um, but then but the thing too, and I I wanna say I could be wrong, but I wanna say that Joe had a a little bit of a different nose. He might have had some work done. Because I do know that Michael somebody posted a picture of Michael with his real nose. Um Jenny says even his forehead is evil. <laughs> you say use the evil man. I want to see Michael when he had that wide nose. Yeah, he wasn't a bad-looking guy w- with the wide nose, but he had a lot going. On. And that again, if you've been sexually assaulted, molested, raped, whatever, as a young man, uh, how, how see he kind of has a little bit of that Joe Jackson nose, mm-hmm. but I think with his mother's nose, uh, uh, Joe's Joe Jackson's nose a little more flat. So I think with his, you know, take his mom's nose and his dad's nose and put them together, and that's how you have it. You know, now it it goes. For, yeah, see, I see. I don't think there's any work done there yet. I think that that's the change, and I think that's what he saw. Yeah, I think no. I think there's work between seventy five. Maybe now. there is work. Maybe there is work. Oh, there is. Yeah. I wish I could get the picture. That- yeah, but is that build up or because your your nose does grow over time? So is the bridge is the bridge coming out? Because I, I'm with you, the one on the left. I wish that was bigger. Come on, Jenny. I know we're not paying you anything, but I can't blow up that picture at all because the 75 looks natural. Yeah, very handsome there, and then that and then he's starting to look like a zombie, but. Because the funny thing is sometimes when you see leaving Neverland, there's a couple times where people like get pictures of him. Cause all we've seen is like promo pics for the most part, but there's a couple pictures that they get these kids have of, of Jackson from the time they spent with him. Oh my God. Scary monster. Like, yeah, here, like some of the looks in the guy's eyes are like, I can't exp- I can't explain it other than like I would not want to be alone in a room with that dude. Look, he went from being a cute kid to being basically Liz Taylor, you know? He looks like Elizabeth Taylor. And yeah, like, but, yeah, but Elizabeth Taylor at one point, I think she was like wasn't she pretty? Yeah. Point. Elizabeth Taylor. Let's see. I know I gotta look up Elizabeth Taylor. Like in her prime. Elizabeth Taylor in her prime. Like I also like I also like typing in people's names. Cause like Elizabeth Warren is the first one that comes up now. It's surprising. It's not surprising to me, but you get a lot of like Elizabeth Smart. A lot of like the true crime anybody that's connected with true crime. Yeah. Like it's always higher on Google searches. Let's see, Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, I'm, eh. putting up, I'm putting some put, pictures up here. Yeah, nah, she's all right. She's good looking. Nah, she's all right. Ah, come on. She looks like she has hairy arms. <laughs> she doesn't have hairy arms either. I'm looking at all these pictures, but you know, like some sometimes, you know. Have you, <laughs> that's the worst is when you're like, girl's cute. Then you see her arms. Oh my God. The Zoe just posted hideous Jackson. Oh my God. He is the worst. See, okay. That picture of Michael Jackson, which is that whatever is left of his nose and his 
facial hair, that's like a that's like a woman with really hairy arms. You know? Yeah. Like, oh look, ah. No. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like women are allowed to like uh, like there's dudes that you know work out a bunch and they shave their arms. Uh, uh, you're fine if you're gonna put that much time and in going into the gym and and all that stuff and you want to shave your arms. Oh, what I care, right? You, you hey, put in, you're you're putting the time and and energy into it. If any of my sisters listen to this at a later date, your arms oh. are made, regardless of the hair. Yeah, are you guys Italian? No, we have no Italians. Because some of some of the people in your family have that Italian look. Yeah, yes, they do. It's weird. I bet you guys are some Italian. Like, they, like uh, we've always been told how like Irish we are. Yeah, and uh, I think it was uh, my little brother did like the twenty three and Me or whatever it is, like the genealogy mm-hmm. test, and um. Which has made my dad really scared because he's like, I, I don't know if... He's like, I know I had four kids. <laughs> uh, he's starting to get freaked out. He doesn't want to be like my, end up like my dad or Jerry. Yeah. Who would feel so you... guilty that he would just like... I don't know. I think he would just like toss him some money because he would just feel so bad. Even if they don't need money, like uh, here's the money. Yeah, I don't. Th- he would just the, he would like talk about it way too much. It would like stress him out. I was surprised mm. how how well my dad. Well, hopefully, I mean, as we get older and wiser, that we actually become wiser. That's what I'm hoping for. Well, I don't know. In a, I don't know if I'm going to get there. In a weird sense, he 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 did. He always had that feeling that. He might have had another kid, yeah. That he, that he didn't know about, but he could never get confirmation. Or, um, well, the, nowadays it's nice because, like, you know, you have social media, so it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you go, okay, well, I dated this person for a couple months and it didn't work out, so, so it, you kind of can see what's going on with their lives, and then you go, oh, they're getting married. And yeah. they don't have like some young son that's the ring bear, you know. They're getting <laughs> married and they don't have any kids, and you're like, oh, dodge that bullet. Yeah. Well, possibly because you don't know. Maybe they put the kid up for adoption. You know. Yeah, I guess that's part. <laughs> I guess I mean, that's, that's possible. Well, so that's what happened. I guess I, I should get into the story just a little bit. I mean, that's what happened with my dad. So, so what, when was, I think it was two like two years ago, we found out that my dad had a, another daughter that he didn't know about that uh, before he met my mom and before they got married. It was a college girlfriend, and at some point, my dad decided, hey, you know what? I instead of getting drafted and going to Vietnam, I'm going to go ahead and enlist in the Navy. And his girlfriend at the time. Um, prior to the end of the semester, she knew he was going to Navy. Said something weird, like "Hey, forget about me. Just go do your thing. Don't worry about me, about me. Don't think about me. You know, I'll, I'm I'm done with your life. You know, I'm I'm done or whatever." Right. So he went and, and did did you know went to Great Lakes Naval Base and did boot whatever. And uh, after that, in when he had some free time, he went back to the school that he was attending, the university, and that's when he first heard some rumors like, hey, your girlfriend, uh, we heard that she's pregnant, and she's now back living with her parents, and they have her locked up, and, and you know, you're going to have a kid here in the next few months, and so some people were saying that, some people said, no, that's not true, uh, she just made it up just to kind of test your love for her, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and my dad, you know, Knowing him, um, yeah, he tried to find out, but he wasn't gonna like bust his ass. You know, he, he was. If there's nothing he can do to, to actually find out the truth, and he just kind of let it let it be, and kind of went on with his life. But then I I think it was. He, he told me it must have been. It was after I was born. It might have been like 1986. He decided he was gonna try to 
get a hold of his college girlfriend and to find out the truth and find out if she actually had a kid and if he had another daughter or you know, mm-hmm. find out if he had another kid. Um, so he ended up calling. She had a, I think she had an uncle who was like a um, the the college band director who was like really well known at the school in the area. He called her, so he called him up to see if he could get her number, and he told her he's like, listen. She's moved on with her life. Um, she has nothing to talk to you about. Forget about her. Leave her alone. Leave her family alone. Don't try to contact ever again. So my dad said, okay, done. Left Which it. is so weird when you're like not trying to be a weirdo about it. And then people yeah, are like, he- dude, she's done. Move on with it. Don't talk. No, don't contact her again. And you're just like, shut like, the fuck up. It's yeah, what, first it- of all, what you should say is shut up. You stupid! I'm, I'm I'm not calling to disrupt your life. I'm just, you know, I, there's a rumor that we got pregnant. Me yeah. and her got pregnant. Yeah, and I'm just trying to figure that out. Now you're trying to act like I'm some kind of creep. Yeah, it's like, hey, motherfucker! I've been married now for 14 years. I have five kids. He's like, he's not trying to get back with this woman. He just wants to find out the truth. You know, it's and it's something that obviously lingered with them and that affected them. Yeah. So yeah, he's gonna call you, and and the guy didn't even have the common courtesy to say, you know what? Yeah, she did have a kid, and they put her up for adoption. That's all he had to say. He didn't even have to talk to her. He could just been like, yeah, "Yeah, the rumors are true. She had a kid. She was adopted. We don't know where she is. We don't know who you know who her parents are. We don't know where she's living." It would have been the end of it. That's that's because people are people are just shitty people. And the thing is, is like, you know, um, it happens with men and women. You know, there there's men that do shitty things. They give kind of the whole group some shitty names, right? And then you have like w- women that will uh, not, not I don't want to say women in general, but yeah. there, there are a couple with the screws loose that will pull the whole, I'm pregnant but they're not pregnant. Yeah. And I, and I actually didn't think this happened like that often. I know it doesn't happen too often. I know that there's, uh, I know plenty of men that have had some scares where like their relationship was ending or not going so well. And then, um, I don't know if out of desperation or maybe it was true, but sometimes out of desperation, they'll say, well, I'm possibly pregnant. Um, we don't need Zoe to chime in with her peanut gallery. There's no we in pregnant. Yes, if you're if you're married or in a good relationship and your significant other gets pregnant, then the man should step up to the plate, help out, make sure she's comfortable. If she wants ice cream, go get her ice cream. If she wants to eat a jar of pickles, let her eat a jar of pickles. You did this. This is your fault to, to all men out there. This is your fault. Step up to the plate. Um, the, worst part, the worst part of when my, my wife was pregnant was the fact that she never wanted ice cream. And I always asked, I'm like, do you want some ice cream? Are you hungry? Do you, you want, want you any loaf? gravy? You want some peanut butter? Something? Look at some pizza. You're hungry, right? No? Okay. No, well, I'm going to go ahead and order myself a yeah. pizza. I just ordered myself a pizza. <laughs> um... Yeah, that's. I think if I was going to look forward to anything of ha- of a pregnancy, it would be the cravings, right? And let, yeah. But like my luck, like you know, I'd knock up the chick, and then she'd be like, "Give me some crawfish." Yeah, she's like, "I want some crawfish and some sardines." Like, what? What? That's what you want? You um, gotta get them, get them from Louisiana. They have to be fresh yeah, from Louisiana. They have to be fresh. Well, yeah, yeah, that would be my, that'd be my luck. I was, I was, oh, okay. So, so I knew a guy that dated somebody that me and you both know. And, yeah. you know, it was the whole like, hey, I heard you're dating so and so. And the guy's like, no, I'm not. She's crazy. And that's like the standard guy go to. Oh, it's not working out. So I call her crazy. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. But, so I was like, okay, he's just full of shit. And 
and he's just saying she's crazy. But then I heard from like friends of his, like, you know, like they were telling me the story, but they didn't know that I knew the girl. So they're like telling me the story and they're like, yeah, she was telling him for like months that uh, she was pregnant. And, oh, and yeah. she was, she's putting like, uh, she's like wearing something to make it kind of look like she was pregnant. So, so, yeah. yeah. I, I know the story, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know all yeah. the details, but all I do know is like, I mean, this is somebody that me and you knew really well. Yeah. Um, who but, had her head on straight, right? Yeah, but here's what's funny, though, is um, I don't know if it was through, like, Facebook or back when there was, like, MySpace or whatever it was. But, this again, this is somebody that me and Morgan knew in high school. Had her head on straight. She was a really smart person, a really nice person. She got married to, like, some weird guy. Yeah. So it's not like she just, like, went you know, off the deep end. Like, I think this guy pushed her off the deep end because I think he was out there. I think he was mentally abusive. Yeah, I'll very mentally. I think he was me- very, very, very much so mentally abusive. Like, cr- not, but yeah, beyond what you think, not just like calling names, but I think like, I mean, from what I heard, like it was like weird sexual stuff. Forcing her to do stuff sexually that she did not want to do. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, just yeah, so this is after that, and so maybe she just like was like, I found a good guy, and he doesn't want to date me anymore, or it's not working out for whatever, and and this is how she coped with it. Well, I mean, fair enough because she went through the ringer, but when she was married to that guy, when when this girl was married to that crazy guy, uh, uh, I I want to say that she sent me like a direct message. Back then, I don't even think we called him direct message, but it was just kind of like, hey, how are you doing? And I sent something back that was not like, it wasn't out of line or anything. And she like, like copied all that and sent it to my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Like, see what he said. And like, but my girlfriend at the time, she, of course, like, she just had an issue with it. So then it was like World War Three. But when you broke down the email, she wasn't, she had no reason to like, I mean, she was making huge leaps, which always made me wonder if she even sent the email or if her crazy husband, you know what I mean? Sent it. Did it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Like I'm going to show this guy for messaging my wife. I'm going to send this to his girlfriend. So I, I don't know. Yeah. A lot of weird things with, with that. Yeah, but the, the, the best is, yeah, with the dodging the bullet. The best, though, is, is um, I played in our town, like a little duo gig. And we're just like in the corner, like right by the front door. And I, I think it was the first time we we're playing there, but it was during like around alumni weekend. And we have this big alumni softball tournament. So the whole thing was I was trying to invite some people that went to our high school to come out to the, like, I think there's like a lot of stuff that goes on Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, but we were playing like Wednesday or something. So had a good crap, but this girl that, like I said, faked a pregnancy or told a guy she was pregnant and then kind of faked it for a while. Yeah. One that was married to a very abusive guy. She was with this guy from my high school. Nice guy, kind of a nerdy guy. Yeah. But a very nice guy. Anyways, she looked fine. She looked normal. Um, but for whatever reason, she had like really bright lipstick on. It was, anyway, it was, it was just kind of. I don't know what the point of it was, but uh, it she wanted to stand. She was trying to stand out. Maybe that's her thing. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's like so we're playing in the corner, and they're there as a couple, 
and this girl and the guy that go to leave. And I think I said like, maybe to the guy, Hey, be good to her. Something like that. Yeah. Or maybe I said to her, Hey, be good to him. Something stupid. Like the guy goes out the door. She comes in, leans over. I'm playing good. And she d- just goes, call me. <laughs> and I look, she could have been hammered for all. Yeah. We were, we were all pretty drunk. It was like, it was so strange because it was like, one, it was like, one, I know the guy that you're with. Two, why did you send a, I wanted to say, if you're trying to be so cool to me now, why did you send a, uh, a message to my uh, girlfriend back in the day trying to get me in trouble. Call me. I'm thinking, I don't know your number. Or maybe she handed me her number and said, call me. Yeah. But it was strange. And, the, and all I could think was like, okay, I've heard some stories because like even the guys that were talking shit about her are saying that she, you know, basically faked this pregnancy. Mm-hmm. all kind of backpedaled on the idea that sh- they heard some stories that she was married to a complete douche fuck, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's not really fair, you know. Faking a pregnancy is awful, you know, but uh, that's not really fair to her if she went through all the situation, not just verbally, but mentally, and, you know, it's just sad. Goes back to, we should have let them sing in the choirs, and we should have let them on stage way beforehand. (laughs) Guys, stop. You want to be a tough man? You want to be an alpha man? Don't be such a a puss, okay? Don't be a puss. And let women be strong. I'll try to hold them back. Don't try to get them their way. Applaud them. Occur, encourage them. Uh, we always seem to get on these feminist rants. If that's where things take us, that's where things go. That's Welcome, Captain Morgan. Sometimes we talk about fe- feminism. It's a variety show. We talk about whatever. Oh, man. So, oh, I did want to bring it. I don't know. You don't have serious XM, do you? Do you? I don't know if I do. Did I know you? I did, I did get I did get something in the mail about serious. To like renew my subscription. <laughs> oh yeah, so you probably had like the buy the new car, like hey, you get a three month subscription, whatever. Right. Well, I I, I started. I was thinking about you last week because I I was kind of flipping through channels, find something, and they now have um, Dave Matthews Band Radio, which it it's not, pretty much it's like ninety nine percent Dave Matthews. But it's kind of cool because I uh, on Fridays they actually play wherever wherever their show is during the summer tour um they have the show live on Sirius X yeah this and was like good information to know 20 years ago yeah I know right you would have loved I, it I, yeah well it's like weird because like they were one of my favorite bands for a long time and same with you right yeah I mean but, but it's like how much do you listen to them now I don't well yeah. until I until I, I turned it on, I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of like it. Not kind of like it. I was like, oh, I really like this song. I actually, I, and, and back in the day, I liked to listen to their their studio albums the best. That was, that was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though I had, like, listeners supported and live at Red Rock. Because you just had on everything, Dave, right? Yeah. But now, as, like, if I put them on now, just... I actually uh, have been enjoying them a little more lately than like in the last. 
I've probably listened to them more in the last year than I have in 15 years. Yeah. But normally when I'm listening to them, I like to put on live records. And I would agree with that. I think live is so much better than the studio. Other than like a, a song that I haven't heard in a while, I'm not going to be surprised. Like where if it's live, there might be like a, a hit or a fill or something. Uh, maybe like a, word, words are different. You know what I mean? Or there's a, the solo is different. So it's just like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't remember. Like, I could probably listen to both of those live records and be surprised by a lot of stuff because I just don't remember every detail or nuance. Um, live on Butt Radio, B U T T Radio. Thanks for joining us. All butts, all the time. Until next week. Until Thursday. Adios, amigos. And remember, your ego is not always your amigo. Thanks for listening to Captain and Morgan. If you like the show and want to know more, check out captainandmorgan.com. Please also remember to subscribe to Captain and Morgan on YouTube or catch it live on Discord. You can also follow Captain and Morgan on Instagram at the Captain and Morgan or on Twitter at Cap and Morgan. <laughs> <laughs>